two stories this is shilpa kidiyur and uh, before we i introduce my guest for today let me just take a brief moment to explain to you what i'm trying to do here at her club true stories her club true stories is a platform for women entrepreneurs as well as mompreneurs mompreneurs can both mompreneurs and women entrepreneurs can come on this platform and talk about their venture and describe the journey that they are taking towards it so it's basically her club two stories is a platform to inspire as well as get inspired having said that let us welcome our guest for today uh, she is shweta sharan and a quick intro about her will be she is the founder of bangalore schools a 49000 member facebook community of parents and teachers she instituted the group into a company called as bangalore schools education initiatives which she runs with her co directors she is a freelance education journalist for newspapers like the hindu deccan herald and mint She is also a digital marketing strategist, a video blogger, and social media experts with the various schools in Bangalore. Shweta also edits Toka Box, a Seattle-based organization that creates activity boxes and books for children. And she is a mom to a ten-year-old. Uh, Shweta, hi! Welcome to Her Club Two Stories, and thank you for taking out time today to talk to us. It is an absolute pleasure. I am really uh, impressed by the work that you do with her club true stories. I have been looking at the videos. I loved how you are chronicling the voices of female entrepreneurs. Many of them who are going are going to change the world. So, thank you so much. So, Shweta, before before we begin about knowing, you know, how you do what you do, uh, let let us know understand a little about you, your background, your education, etc. Sure. So I was born in Chennai, a very hot place, and uh, I uh, studied there for around twenty four years. I got married and moved to Bangalore. I love Chennai, but Bangalore is my second home. I I love the city, and uh, here I had my daughter when I uh, I was around thirty, um, and she is now ten years old. And in Bangalore, I I discovered so many interesting things. So in of course in Chennai, I did a a, a BA and an MA in English. I was working for some time in the Hindu. But when I came to Bangalore, it was at a very interesting time. This was when uh, a lot of of mothers were becoming entrepreneurs. So I think it really influenced me a lot because they were doing some fabulous things. and uh, i didn't get the idea of uh, becoming an entrepreneur then i, I didn't know what i would do but then uh, when my daughter was 2 years old in 2012 i started a group called bangalore schools this was the time when uh, bangalore had some great groups social media groups like mums of bangalore come up so it was very influenced by what was happening at that time so i created the group and then uh, the rest is history because i never knew that it would become such a huge and popular group and that one day i would enter education so i am trained to be a journalist but i inadvertently became an education journalist and an education entrepreneur so that's a background of my story and uh, for that i have also lived in mumbai another amazing city uh, uh, for a couple of years i was working there as a journalist as well when my husband had transferred there for a few years this was before my daughter was born so all these uh, uh, living in mumbai and bangalore really changed me completely so yeah that's yeah. a little ground okay okay so uh, you know uh, you said that you are a journalist basically you're trained to be a journalist so yes. uh, how did you you know uh, what are the uh, highs and lows of being a journalist so a lot has changed when you uh, you know so, so in 2005 or 6 we didn't have the digital explosion that we now have we have we still had these uh, very straightforward news le- newspapers like the hindu economic times now we have some uh, may, uh, we have many publication not just first post and quartz and quint you have a lot of independent publications you have something like like medium has a writer program writer platforms and um, you have substack as well so right now there's an explosion so when i started out as a journalist it was just as a reporting uh, job it uh, it was very exciting you are going and reporting on someone or something and it's very exciting 
but it also doesn't pay you well and it also isn't that rewarding in the long term. So I think journalism has evolved a lot. Uh, I would say the uh, highs and lows, the highs is always seeing your name in print or in a, you know, as the author of a story, it never gets old. I, I have, uh, you know, I have, uh, 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 I have received many gifts. I don't think anything can top the feeling of seeing my name in a, uh, in a newspaper or a, a publication article. The lows would be that if you're, uh, you know, it, it's not a very lucrative field unless you're very senior or you are very, um, you know, you're, uh, uh, you, you rank very high. Uh, and uh, it, for freelance journalists, the income can be very uneven. So that's the low point for okay. uh, you know, that's the sort of a drawback, I would say. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, why did you start on freelance journalism? So I, uh, that's actually, you know, a very good question. That, uh, so I, I, in the beginning, it was to, because I wanted to be with my daughter, I didn't want to do it. Uh, nine to five job. It was um, something I didn't want to do. I wanted to be with her. But uh, as I uh, uh, sort of, uh, when she became older, I could have always gone back to a full time job. But then I realized that right now it's a great time to be a freelancer. This uh, we are living, uh, you know, during the gig economy. Uh, we are living during the passion economy. This is when you can actually make more money by freelancing with different clients and with different uh, publications than you could with a nine to five job. So it's a, it's a very lucrative kind of an economy. And um, I really like the idea of that. The reason being is that I didn't want to only do journalism. I, I wanted to do other projects as well that would earn, uh, earn some money as well as fuel my passion. So that's why I became a freelancer. I wanted to get bylines, not just in the Hindu. I wanted bylines in the Mint, the Tech and Herald and other publications. So that was the main um, reason. And I, I think the perception of freelancing has changed a lot now. Before they would think that we would just chill out at home. It's not like that. It's very, uh, it's a very serious. In fact, you need more motivation because you will be distracted by a hundred things. Um, uh, my cousin uh, is a freelancer. He tells me that uh, at nine, he switches off the doorbell and doesn't answer it until about four. Oh, so it is a lot of hectic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, no, like he doesn't want the uh, distraction or he doesn't want people to think that he's just doing nothing, which is what a lot of people think because you're yeah. working from home or you're self-employed. They think that you are, you just make your own schedule. It's not always like that. Yes. Uh, it, uh, so it, you need a lot of discipline. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Then we talk about, uh, you know, uh, how did the idea of uh, starting something called as Bangalore schools come to you? I mean, why did so, you ever yeah. start up something on a Facebook? So I was uh, uh, I was discovering Facebook a lot. It was a very exciting platform then. Right now, it's uh, Instagram, yes. which is an amazing platform. But right then, uh, Facebook was coming up in a big way. And uh, when 2012 was when my daughter was um, two years old, I didn't know anything about schools in the city. I didn't know what kind of schools she had to go to. I didn't know anything. I was a new parent. So I decided to start the group inspired by Mums of Bangalore, which was a very famous group even then, I decided to start um, a Bangalore school so that I could uh, meet other parents and, you know, uh, get their input on which school to send my daughter to. So it, uh, it started with 50 people. It now has almost 50,000 people. It, it took a lot of time to grow it. We, yeah, we, I had to really sort of, uh, uh, you know, get more people to join in the beginning. But now I'll, I have to make sure that not too many people join. I, I uh, you know, I make sure I screen the profile and me and my co-admin screen the profile and make sure that it's a good uh, people, legitimate profiles are uh, entering the group. So yeah, so that's how it started. It was a very personal reason that I started the group. I never realized that it would, um, you know, launch me into education as it were. I, I, I don't even have a background in education, but it was something that made me get really interested in education. It was, uh, uh, it was, uh, it, it's, it's sort of a defining moment, I should say. Okay. So at Bangalore schools, the group, uh, what, what are your responsibilities like? So, so uh, you say that you meet parents, you meet teachers. So what are, yeah. what, what are they looking for in a group called as Bangalore schools? So in the beginning, when I started Bangalore schools, it was only about which school do I choose for my child? Yeah. Now the conversation has evolved into what is alternative schooling? I'm considering that for my child. What is Montessori? 
what are the other options apart from CBSE and ICSE? What about open schooling? What about extracurricular activities? What about internships? So as our audience is growing, we also have more sophisticated questions from our parents who are not just looking at schools. Of course, that's the main motive of the group is to find a school, but they're looking at other things as well for their children. And they want to grow as parents and they want their children to also find the right path in education. So that's primarily what the group is like. My role is the admin. So as an admin, I have to be very um, unbiased because there are a lot of points of view that come. I have to make sure that everyone uh, presents their point of view, but there should be no disrespect. You should respect other people's opinion. You should not you know, attack them or criticize them or uh, call names, which can happen on social media because yeah. somehow we need to become very volatile on social media. You know, I'm sure we are not like that in real life, but on social media, somehow we just pick, take everything very personally. So we all have to keep, and I have been, I have, I have been guilty of that as well. So as the admin, I tell people, I, I intervene if there's something going on where people are fighting and I tell them, you know, both of you have your points of view. Let's put it across respectfully and carry on because there's no point in just, um, fighting about it. You need to accept another person's point of view. That's the purpose of education and that's why we educate our children. So that's the main motive of the group. Uh, now we are doing so, so much more. So the group itself is an, an uh, interesting resource. If you go to the group, you can find so much information on a lot of things, not just on schools. You can also find information on special needs resources in the city. So Bangalore has some superb special needs resources. It has some great therapists great teachers, it has some wonderful, uh, you know, uh, opportunities for young people. And it, it's a resource as well. And lastly, I think we have now, so we are organizing a lot of events as a part of the group. So uh, before I used to conduct a lot of offline events outside. Now that the pandemic is here, we are conducting a virtual expo in October 2020. So it's going to be an completely virtual walk-in education expo centered on Bangalore schools, okay. but it'll have events as well. So we did one in January. We uh, created a, an offline expo. It was a great success. We got 2000 walk-ins a day uh, across two days. And uh, October 2020, it's a, a virtual walkthrough event. So we are tied up with a company in Texas that will uh, simulate a walkthrough. It will feel like you're walking through an education expo. So that's what we are doing right now. So events are something that we organize. We also try and encourage teachers a lot, which is happy. It is teachers day today. Happy teachers. Day. Yes. Um, yeah. So we do that as well. And so, yeah, a lot of events as well. And uh, I should also mention that the group has a lot of principals, educators and educationists. Now it started only with parents. Now you can see the principal of every top school is there in the group. So, Okay. They are, uh, we also encourage the parents to talk about their personal experiences because uh, a teacher uh, or a principal may always believe that their school would be the right fit for the uh, parent, but it's better to hear directly from the parents as to why it works or doesn't work for them. So we uh, try and encourage both. It, it is, it is perfectly fine if a, a teacher wants to say that, you know, my school is great, try it out. But we also want parents to get their reviews out there because it's very important that we help a parent make the right choice. It's not easy to find a school. It's, it's, it's yeah. not just distance or syllabus. It's about whether this school suits your child's mentality and your own. It's, okay. it's not an easy thing that you can just decide very quickly. So we want to help the parents as much as possible. So we try and if someone is promoting too much a school, we tell them, you know, please don't promote it on posts that ask for specific feedback on a specific school, let the parents answer. So that's what we do. Okay. Okay. So, uh, you know, uh, your roles and responsibilities as an admin, as an uh, educator, it goes beyond, you know, just checking that, you know, uh, the legitimate profile comes into the group, etc. You do uh, a lot of uh, research about the school yourself as well, right? Yeah. So uh, I used to, but now I don't do too much of it. The reason being that there's not much time. I uh, At one point, I think uh, before the pandemic, I was in a school 
practically, I think I would visit two schools a week just to check them out. And also because I do social media for a few schools. Uh, right now, I don't have the bandwidth to, you know, go and see them in person. Okay. Maybe after, you know, uh, COVID-19 phases out, maybe I will. But yeah, I do ha I know a lot of the educators myself. I know teachers from schools. I know parents from schools. So I do do, I try and find out as much as possible b before recommending something to someone. For sure. Okay. 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 So, you know, uh, you have been an entrepreneur all, all along. So what was, what, what is that excites you about entrepreneurship? So I love the fact that I can do something that interests me. It, 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 it doesn't have to be something that is a very traditional fit. So what I'm doing is not very conventional. Uh, at least now it is, I think, because there are a lot of groups and I like, being my own boss. I like meeting a lot of people, a diverse set. So in, uh, you know, of course I love being in a nine to five job, but in, uh, as an entrepreneur, you develop a lot of, a lot of skills, uh, you know, with money, with uh, uh, dealing with people, interacting with people, leadership and grit, which I, I love the person I'm becoming because of my entrepreneurship. So that's something I like. Of course the work, I mean, I, there's not a day when I get up and I'm not excited about the work. So, you know, how, how many people can boast of that? Most people wake up on a Monday feeling kind of blue. It's not, not me. I wake up <laughs> happy on a Monday. Yes. So, yeah. I'm sure you the same way too. Okay. <laughs> so what is one quote that you've always lived by? So I have, there's this uh, quote by this very famous writer uh, called Maya Angelou. So the quote goes like this. I've learned that you shouldn't go through life with a catcher's mitt on both hands. You need to be able to throw something back. So that's my favorite quote. <laughs> I read it a few months back. I thought it was a great, I read it on Twitter and yeah. I thought it was a great quote when she's saying that it's not just about taking what life gives you. It is also about giving something back, whether it is, be, uh, by being awesome or whether it is by doing something that creates a social impact. It is also about doing something and having a, a say in your life. Yeah. So I think I have that quote. So, okay. Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, now you are a journalist, you are a founder, you, uh, you are an editor of Toka Box. So how did that happen? I mean, how did the Toka oh, Box yeah. happen? It is a Seattle based company. So yes. Yeah. So I, uh, uh, I've been with Toka Box for about two years now. It was, uh, I applied for the work and I, uh, I, you know, they selected me and I was really happy because it's a wonderful, wonderful organization. It's based in Seattle and they create STEAM boxes. So STEAM is science, technology, engineering, art, and math. Yeah. So it's not just about, you know, STEM. It's about bringing art and reading and literacy into the equation. So they create these activity boxes that are very steam driven and that also feature South Asian books. So, so South Asian books, books by Indian children's authors, books by people from all over the world. So it's not, we are not just looking at great writers like Julia Donaldson and Oliver, uh, Oliver Jeffers. We are also looking at great writers like Sandhya Rao and uh, illustrators like Priya Kurian and uh, writers like uh, Sri Vidya Venkat, great writers. So it's really important for our children to read books that are also about them, not just about children from a different culture. So yes. the Toka Box is, that's the belief that Toka Box has. And I love doing it, uh, you know, carrying that message and working on the content for Toka Box. So it's, it's actually, in a way, introduced me to Indian children's literature in a big way, because even before I would only sit and read the Roald Dahls and the Enlightenments with my daughter. Now we read a lot of Indian children's authors, authors from around the world, yeah. not just from America. So that's that's the greatness of it. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So you know, how do you balance your time being a journalist, being a, you know a, 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 an entrepreneur, then an editor? How do you balance all of it? I actually have a long way to go in balancing my work and my other commitments. I am yet to figure out a timetable or something that works. 
I have realized though that, you know, cutting down on a lot of unnecessary technology helps. You know, I always check my phone and my daughter says, why are you checking your phone first thing in the morning? Don't do it. So cutting back on all those things does help. And uh, I also realized that I, I, I've started reading up a lot about productivity tips and hacks, which really does help. You know, if you uh, want to finish something, just finish it. Don't, uh, you know, do ha half of it and then come back later. Things like that are helping me. And it's just, I think you just need to establish a routine and stick to it and try your best to follow it. So that's, the, that's how I go about it. It's very hard though. I think I need to learn from other <laughs> Women entrepreneur, for sure. So. Yeah, I mean, it is. There is always so much to learn from each other. Yes. Because yes. Uh, you, we might be good in something, we might lack something. So you know, uh, taking exactly. up a trip or yeah. two um, will help us in a really long way. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So you know, now now let's let's come to you know motherhood. Uh, yes. You are a mother to a ten-year-old, and uh, you are a writer and an editor also. So, you know, you need the calm and the space to, for, for uh, thoughts to flow in and, uh, you know, to write anything and everything down on paper. So how do you find the calm? It's really hard to find it, actually, because uh, the, the entire house is full of, uh, you know, either my daughter's here, she comes running in. And then, uh, so it's actually, I have learned to write even when she is talking to me or when she is, oh. Uh, you know, so I have actually sort of tuned my brain to do that. And that is another uh, course, level of multitasking. <laughs> another level, yeah, another level. I, I uh, usually there's hundred things going on when I'm writing, yeah. uh, and I have just tuned my mind to do that. But I do get a lot of time uh, uh, to work alone. But it's it's you know uh, yeah uh, it's it's uh, a balancing act. Uh, I think uh, it was Virginia Woolf who said that every woman needs a room of her own to write in so sometimes with the kids you don't get your own room to yourself sometimes you know one day she's here the next day she's there and uh, someone's uh, coming in and so it it, it i i have learned to sort of work i can work anywhere you can put me in the middle of a traffic uh, you know traffic signal and i can do it there so i've sort of tuned my mind to it okay yeah. okay and uh, do you ever feel uh, go through undergo the mom skills Sorry. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Of course, the mom skills all the time. More when I was a new mom. Now I don't really beat myself up about it anymore because I feel that now we have a great generation of mothers who are always talking about how it's important to give value to your work and your ideas and your goals, not just you know look at things with a guilty mindset. So I used to feel very guilty as a new mom uh, for, you know, going away from her. But now I don't, not that much. I mean, there is still a bit of the guilt, but not that much. And I have to thank fellow moms, fellow mom entrepreneurs, people like you, people like who you interview, because they have been talking so continuously how, about how it is important to give ourselves time and to give value to our goals. Yeah. Because only then will our children realize that they can do what they want. So I, when I, whenever I see a, a woman who's going abroad and, uh, you know, and she, she tells me, I have a friend who travels a lot on work and she say, I feel really guilty leaving my kids back behind. And I tell her, no, you're actually doing something great. You're telling them that a woman can do anything she wants. So that's uh, anyone can do anything they want. So you are a great mom. So I think that's something that other women have taught me. And I should really, uh, you know, be lucky that I'm part of this generation. Yeah, exactly. Yes. You need somebody to, you know, uh, bat for you even on days when you feel low yes. and you feel, you know, you're not doing justice to motherhood. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, uh, what is your tip to moms who are, you know, um, self, who have self-doubt and who have some idea, you know, they, they, they have some idea to start up, but, you know, they, they are unsure about whether to start up or not because you know as mothers uh, as we become mothers the unsurety quotient in us uh, increases yeah. to a different level altogether 
we we before yeah. when we think about ourselves we 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 put ourselves in some other shoes and think that you know uh, whether we are doing justice to our role whether we will be able to take this forward etc so so many you know roadblocks in deciding what is good for you and what you really want to do so what is your advice to women out there who are you know toying with this idea so i would suggest talking to other mothers other uh, mom entrepreneurs talking to them and uh, asking them how did you manage when you first started out i know a lot of moms of babies who have uh, you know their own businesses I, i don't know how they do it talking to such moms will definitely give you a better idea as to how to make it work i also uh, encourage you know a lot of uh, financial literacy i'm sure women are great with money as it is you know we are uh, wired to do to be great at finance but find out a little bit more about how you can uh, manage the cash flow of your business and uh, other things and i finally i would say really look to the support of other women form support groups or join support groups yes. and make sure that these people are uh, have your back because you can't always find support from your family i mean they mean well but it can be very difficult for others to sort of get adjusted to the equation i think finally they do your parents and your family does support you a lot in the end but you do need your friends and your yes. uh, you know other women to support you so form support groups get uh, some talk to someone so i think that's very important because we feel that we are the only uh, ones going through this and everyone is just uh, aces at it it's not true yes. a lot of women have so many doubts a lot of women go through hell you know we think we are the only ones who are going yes. through it it's not like that so i think that really will help and uh, i think listening to your talk show for sure because you are talking to such a variety of women and their different yeah. challenges that will really motivate women entrepreneurs okay so yeah that that was initially the idea and that is the idea going forward also you know to form a community of women entrepreneurs who you know inspire and get inspired with each other you know when you are stuck you you listen to somebody or you remember lis- having listened to somebody who talked about their journey as well and their uh, daily challenges that they are going through but they are not ready to stop you know they take a few st- steps yes. back but they take a few steps back but you know they they are okay with the slow pace also but uh, at the end of the day it is your happiness which matters a lot in the long run so yes. you know that is the idea actually to bring out to women entrepreneurs who are you know uh, there and listening to us so yeah yes absolutely okay so you know uh, shweta you have also you know uh, worked as a full time uh, you have worked in a full time corporate scenario you have done yes. entrepreneurship uh, what next <laughs> i actually don't know you know i i feel that i i'm really interested in digital the digital space okay. i feel that it will evolve in a very interesting way not just in social media but we are looking at so many uh, technologies like uh you know ai and uh the augmented reality and how that is going to come into community building and how that is going to make an impact on publishing and social media so that's something that's very exciting for me so i uh, i'm really beginning to uh, love technology it's something that i really like reading about so the i think next is somewhere at an intersection between what i do and technology that's what i'm looking at next for sure okay so, and and will, will we see an expansion of bangalore schools as well going to yeah we are exactly you i think you <laughs> laid the uh, road ahead uh, yeah we are thinking of taking it to other cities we are looking at chennai next and okay. we are uh, because that's where i'm from so i do have a few uh, schools i know Uh, so we are thinking of expanding it to especially to markets that are not very places that don't have that much information on schools so right now there's so much of information on bangalore in bangalore about schools chennai doesn't have that yet so we want to build that ecosystem and to explore opportunities there so we are looking at other cities for sure okay okay uh so thank you uh, shweta for coming and you know talking to us at hot luck true stories it really means a lot for parents moms uh teachers everybody who looks for you know what bangalore has to offer in the education system please join this group called as bangalore schools on facebook 
uh, and uh, women who are interested in starting up women entrepreneurs uh, if searching for inspiration please do listen to us on her club true stories we are on instagram as well as on youtube thank you so much thank you shilpa it uh, did a you're doing a brilliant job in putting together the stories of women who are excelling at being entrepreneurs many of them are going to be great women and historic entrepreneurs one day and you are building a wonderful database and social capital on them so kudos to you and thank you for having me thank you so much thank you thank you